Welcome everyone to Genesis DLC Part 1. That's what it's called, Genesis Part 1, the full review. I've been playing this for a good few weeks. I've been uh, on PvP multiplayer servers. I have also been playing it in single player and um, a couple other options. And I th think it's time that I... Um, I think I'm able to give a, a proper look at this. Now, this is a long video, as you would have picked up if you've looked at the uh, time this video runs for. But you can jump right to the very crux of what I have to say. Uh, just jump forward in the timeline to this time. Uh, and you can skip all the uh, background information. But I hope you don't do that, to be honest, because I wanted to give this a really fair shot. I I'm going to consider this my fairest review that I've ever done on anything, to be honest. I haven't looked at the uh, boss fights. Uh, they're such a small percentage of the average person's gameplay that it's just really not worth reviewing. And to get to all that sort of stuff, it was just too time consuming. So I haven't bothered with that stuff. So this is about your normal gameplay and what they bring to the table. So I'm going to start off with looking at uh, what the developers have said. Obviously Genesis is not like um, the other ARC uh, games. And uh, but we should look at what they say and uh, maybe map um, what they say against what they actually deliver later on in the video. So let's start with this. Arc Genesis Part 1. Waking up within a virtual simulation, the ultimate task of survival lies ahead with challenges that have yet to be seen. The developers also say this about Genesis, that it represents a new story orientated beginning in Ark's epic saga of survival. And there's a few key words there, of course, which is story orientated beginning. Uh, yeah, purely because of that, um, you will realize it is a beginning. Uh, this DLC is about you've got to prove yourself through a simulation about how to get into Ark itself. So it's a pre Ark game and you can see this why it's different um, simply through this this is your normal uh, way you get into the normal arc you spawn on a beach and in these normal arcs you're basically in a real world but it's a bubble with real creatures and you have to survive it in Genesis DLC you're of course inserted into an arc simulation that is not like the other arc DLCs that you would normally play so in essence, the Ark uh, Genesis, the, you have to pass an Ark simulation, which is the Genesis DLC, to actually be able to progress to Ark itself. That's the principle behind it. Now, it's very brave of the developers to do this because, frankly, people have been playing Ark for quite a few years, and to suddenly come up with a DLC to explain how you got into all that, well, it's actually quite ballsy, and I think it's fraught with a lot of risk. But it does make this very different. Genesis is very different. It has some real key points of difference. It has the robot guide. The map is split into five biomes, which are physically split apart. How you travel between those is different. There are missions with hexagons, a currency. You have glitches you can fix, and it also has new creatures. So it has some pretty unusual stuff at, um, which it's bringing to the table. And I'm going to look at some of the positive and negatives for each of these. It's not all positives and it's not all negatives, as you will see. Um, and uh, some parts about the DLC I really, really like and others I don't. But we'll start off with looking at the first thing, the robot guide. Now, I'm going to play for you here my first 30 seconds, literally first 30 seconds I got into art. Here we go. Those oh. missions are how the simulation tests you. How you prove on, you're the ultimate it. survivor. First, though, we have some exploring ahead of us. Ready to go and walk about? Oh my god, I hate those things. It's a personal hate of mine. In every shape or form, those personal guides, I detest them in every game and always have and always will. I think I said there how I got into, you know, this is my first 30 seconds of playing Ark, but it's my 30, 30 seconds of playing Genesis. Clearly, I don't like those, these things. But uh, it does offer a number of different things, and you can actually change the settings on this robot guide. You can actually make it disappear, which is good. You can also change how much it talks. Uh, you can change the alert settings uh, and all sorts of other bits and pieces, and you can also jump right in and 
change a lot of the way it talks. You can actually disable them all. Um, I've done all that because I personally cannot stand these things. It also has, of course, this hexagon system, basically a shop, um, which is really, really unusual in, in ARC. You don't have anything like it, where you earn hexagons through the currency and you can buy stuff. In some ways it works because resources can be scarce in some of the maps, but um, hexagons are really easy to earn and therefore you can actually unlock some pretty high level stuff and get element really easy and it doesn't really work very well in the overall context of ARC. You also have um, within the uh, robot guide you can actually complete the missions and you can jump into sort of like the uh, gamma or beta missions uh, to they lead you up to sort of like um, being almost like boss fights. I haven't bothered doing those to be honest. You can also use the uh, guide to teleport uh, which is in itself seems pretty uh, good. You've got all the different uh, biomes you can jump into and within each biome you've got um, a number of different compass locations you can uh, therefore jump further and isolate various areas of that biome you want to move into. The animation here is really good. I, I like it. It seems to work nicely. Uh, the creatures come with you. Now I don't have any complaints so much about that but it doesn't really feel like a good way to move between biomes. Here I'm jumping from uh, the swamp to the volcanic biome and this happened to me several times. You always get dismounted and you can sometimes spawn right in amongst creatures and you get killed or everything gets killed around you so you don't have control over that. That's pretty clunky in my opinion. The map itself, the Genesis map, it has these five biomes which are really separate. You've got the bog swamp, you've got the arctic, you've got the lunar, you have the ocean and you have the volcano. Now in itself that looks okay but of course it's not quite like that. Uh, these are really separated by almost barriers. So the map when it's drawn should really look like this. So you have to use that trans that um, teleportation to move between the different biomes because the map is actually looks like that. So everything is very separate. For me this doesn't really work because um, a map, the immersion of a map is this ability to move around it. Like from this Ragnarok map you're moving, you're flying between different areas to gather resources, it's all one continuous flow. And in the Genesis you don't get that, you have to jump between things. Let's start off looking at the bog. Uh, we're going to look at the, the different maps here and um, the different biomes and see what these are like. I like the swamp. Uh, I actually think it's one of the best made ones. It's the um, drawings, the trees, the, the rock in them, the rocks, the water, the mist. It's very well done. You get a real feeling of being in a swampy area. It has this um, has some really cool structures that come out of you out of the mist. Um, it you know it has a good feel to it, but it does feel quite enclosed. It's easy to get um, disorientated. Uh, you sometimes are not quite sure what's going on. Uh, you're moving around different parts of it. It gets a bit confusing. However, I really like this sort of stuff where you get this lighting, the effects, not the fog, the colors. That works really well. And in the swamp biome, the real beauty of it is when you lift above those tree levels and you start looking above. The big trees in the middle of the map, not in the middle, but slightly off to the side, they are brilliantly done and I think that whoever um, did these really needs a lot of credit. They are fantastic. They are big, they are tall, they're majestic, they, they tower out of the swamps. You also got a lot of these um, platforms or areas that you can build on and um, yeah, they're actually really cool. Uh, it works really, really well. These trees are I actually think they're one of the best features I've seen in a ARC map. But of course if you wanted to build up them in these areas it's a little bit difficult because you have to deal with these little fellas all the time. We'll talk more about those uh, a little bit later. So that would make a building up here or running around there tricky. 
One thing I really don't like is you're always running up against the barriers. You're always running up against the walls. So the bog swamp itself is really atmospheric. I do like that the fauna is really well designed, it's well balanced, has good build spots, but sometimes feels a little bit too cramped and the border walls can feel quite close, but I do like it. Another thing we'll just quickly look at is the dino levels. They're really high and that's actually a really cool thing. Uh, some of the maps uh, and some of the other DLCs you get quite low dino levels and that can be a real pain in the ass. but the ones in Genesis are quite high. I also like the general colours of the dinos. I'm just looking at the ones in the swamp here but you have the similar um, concept for the ones in the sea and the volcano areas. The colours um, and the way they are drawn I really like. A lot of them have in this swamp area have these pastely looks they are often quite camo um, the creatures are really well drawn. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about the Arctic environment. This is a good little biome in itself. Uh, it has a lot of good areas to build, lots of rocky crags. It has this real good feel to it. Uh, you get you're used to the roaring of the wind, I like that. It's yet again very atmospheric, it has the fog, it has lots of... Um, I don't know, it feels oppressive. And also the sound effects. Don't forget sound effects. And they're really good in a lot of the biomes, and in particular I noticed them here in the um, Arctic one. It has this towering structure in the middle of course, um, which I think is quite dynamic, looks really cool. And I love this part of the map as well. It reminds me of Aliens movies, freaky, these spiky sort of things. I know it's just um, snow blowing at a speed, obviously. But look at that. God, doesn't that remind you of sort of the Aliens movies? Fantastic. Great design. Very, very good design. So the Arctic in itself is very atmospheric, has great ambient sounds, has lots of really good small build spots but it actually is a really harsh environment to live in and yet again the border walls often feel just too close. The ocean. Now this is great but also not great. On the surface the pillars here, everyone, can, anyone who's been here will see these pillars, these are your main building spots above land. They are really well done, no problems with that. They uh, look fantastic, the design of them, the rock features, um, yeah, it was really quite superb. The on top of the pillars themselves are pretty simplistic. They all are pretty similar. Uh, you haven't got huge amounts of resources in the ocean area above the water, but they're great, great spots. And it, People in PvP obviously building big bases up here already, but they're not as hard as you'd think to raid. But the real benefit actually lies below, below the ocean, and I should point out here that the animations of the sea are very good. You also have underneath here great features on the oceans, which are these hidden um, sort of uh, tech bubbles, if you want to call them that. I love these. They're just fantastic. The colours. They haven't been shy about using colours. And, you know, you're getting a lot of people building in these spots. But look at but look what you get down here. Look at the colours here. The um, it, it just feels like it feels like you are in almost like a rock pool. But it's dried out. You've got all the resources you need in some of the, these locations. Um, I actually think under the water in the ocean is brilliant. And it has a real verticality to it as well. The oceans are deep. They have a feeling of depth. Like they go down and they go down and they go down and they keep going down. It's really cool. We also have in the ocean some of these new sort of features, uh, and here we have the whirlpool. Uh, you know, it's more sort of um, candy, it doesn't really do much. Border walls though, this is the ocean, and in our brains, oceans should be enormous. It's actually the smallest map. 
So the ocean, I really think that it's actually under the water. It's one of the best designed oceans in the arc. It has real verticality, great building spots, has some real hidden gems, but it should be the largest map, but in fact, the smallest. The lunar environment, an interesting one. Yet again, while it's uh, quite spectacular, you know, when I first came here and saw it, I was blown away. I mean, what the hell is this we're looking at? It is certainly not like anything else that you're going to find in any of the ARC maps on anything else. The closest is Arboration, and Arboration is nothing like this. I, I like some of the stuff. It's got features like <laughs> a way of traveling between the various locations using these sort of geysers. And uh, you can do some pretty neat little tricks. You can land on them and trampoline off the next one. I do like that. Yeah, obviously a lot of tech stuff here. Uh, you know, some of these things, if you haven't played a lot of mods, you wouldn't have seen them before, but in the mods they're quite common. Despite it being quite unique, it has some of the, it has personally I consider the dumbest feature, this basketball game. And also the uh, greatest feature is this, uh, the meteor strikes. I honestly just sat here for bloody ages looking at this. How beautiful is that? It has caves within it. It also of course has um, uh, some new uh, resources which you can gather. The lunar landscape, it is super super unique. It is a great design concept. It is challenging. It has some unique resources. The meteor storms apparently are the best. But frankly, it really does not fit into ARC whatsoever. Volcanic. Let's look at that. Visual, wow, it is beautiful, it is really stunning to look at. And when that volcano erupts in the middle, you just stand there and watch it for a while. It also has landslides, the colours, the brightness of them, uh, I really love it. You know, particularly the red lava, it's always a visually, um, a visually sort of grabbing feature, and they do that really well on this map. The, you look, I don't, don't think there's as many build spots as there should be. Uh, yeah, I would have hoped to have much better build spots, but there isn't as many as you'd think. Um, of course, down in the middle of it all, you have the Magmasaur, Magmasar Caves, where you get the eggs from. And the eggs are actually quite easy to get. I haven't really got that worked out yet. The volcanic area, it's a beautiful design, breathes life into volcanic areas. The spawn in, not so easy. Has some good build spots, but not enough of them. Yet again, the map is just too small. Overall, what do I think of this map? Look, it has some great individual maps, some real unique features, visually stunning some of these, but it has no cohesion. Each map feels cramped, there's no flow between them. As they are small, people are just going to bore of them real quick. And to be honest, it doesn't really work that well. But let's move on. Let's look at these um, missions. Obviously there's a whole pile of the missions. You can yeah, choose various missions. Um, various parts of the maps are actually uh, cut off so that you can't build in them, which is a real pain in the ass. And um, you see them all around the place by these um, flags and you can select various levels of them. And when you complete the missions, you get points. Some of them doing them by yourself are pretty tricky. Others aren't. Uh, but if you select the missions, you can repeat them over and over and over, and you can just build up a whole pile of hexagons. Um, yeah, some of them are pretty stupid, uh, and some of them are a lot of fun. Oh, this is real fun. Um, I think everyone's seen this one. Um, but, you know, you do have to protect what you do. You get some rewards at the end of them. But don't do what I did here, which is not pay attention. And I was just looking at my rewards, um, thinking it's all pretty cool. And then check out uh, some other things. And oh, hang on, someone snuck up behind me. Concentrate. And at the end of that, you got this. I do need to concentrate. So, in the context of it being a simulation, the missions um, do fit, but they are as far from an arc thing that you could possibly think of. So that feature really pushes Genesis out to the real borders of arc. It is super easy to get hexagons, which means easy tech, which undermines a lot of arc. Anyway, let's look at the creatures, the Genesis creatures. Are they good? Do they fit? First off, we have these insect swarms. 
Yeah, they are just annoying. End of story. Just annoying. Then, of course, we have these, uh, oh, well, these are fantastic, to be honest. The Bloodstalkers uh, have a great a way of capturing you. It's a real unique taming method. And the way you move around is, well, who doesn't want to be Spider-Man, let's face it, and you're essentially <laughs> Spider-Man. You know, Ark doesn't always get all its creatures right, but this creature is just bloody brilliant. Bloodstalkers are brilliant. They are a great addition to the game. They aren't unbalanced. They uh, really change the gameplay, but in a good way. A well thought out creature. Good job. Then, of course, you have the giant turtles, uh, which the taming method for them is painstaking, to say the least. least. It isn't hard getting swarms up to tame them. Uh, but if you want a high level one, you're going to be sitting on your jacksie for a long bloody time doing exactly what I'm doing here. Now, the turtles, uh, as everyone knows at the moment, they are really unbalanced. They, uh, they soak uh, bases way too easy. But, you know, it's just one of these things Ark does from time to time, isn't it? Things do tend to get entered which have been unbalanced. Speaking of unbalanced, and I know they've uh, nerfed this in the last few days, but I haven't had a time to look at it, of course, is the Magmasar. So it has a lot of, it's just beautiful to look at. I think it's just design wise, honestly, it's just bloody brilliant. It's fantastic. Stunning design, but it, it is actually really unbalanced when it comes to PvP. The breath can soak turrets. It's just ridiculous. And of course, here we have um, everyone's favorite. The Ferox. Uh, yet again, a really good taming mechanism. Um, it has uh, nice climbing features. It looks good. It's a good twist, uh, I guess, on art creatures. I like this sort of thing. A good twist. Uh, it feels powerful. It feels chunky. If you get your jumps going, that's pretty cool too. And they're pretty tough too. These guys I really like. They're a really great new addition. So the Bloodstalkers and the Ferox here are real classy additions and um, they certainly need to be given some credit for those. Not so much for the Magmasar perhaps. And um, the last biggie of course is the Space Whale. Which sound effects wise, I mean listen to that. They nailed that. Visually, beautiful, absolutely fantastic, you can't complain. Oh, that sounds so good. But, you know, you have to ask yourself, oh, where does this fit within the game context? I'm absolutely sure we'll be seeing videos of people using this to raid. Will it be super effective? Maybe you can teleport to certain locations. Um, it's top-notch design, but honestly, I just think it's incredibly odd. But it is a simulation, so they can take this wherever they want to go. But it is really odd. Let's have a quick look at the new equipment. Uh, we're not going to look at all of it, and just see if it's some useful additions here. You have the uh, platforms, and these are the C platforms. You have a metal and a stone one. Ark actually has needed these for a long time. You needed somewhere you can build a decent sea base. Building them on bloody rafts just wasn't going to work out. And I particularly like the, um, pardon, the wooden one here. They uh, look really good above and below water. I like it when people um, put uh, time into these things. The fishing net, <laughs> well, it looks cool. And I really like the animation. And you do get some nice little things when you catch some fish. It's a cool animation, but it's just a fishing net, for the love of God. Is that the best they can come up with, a fishing net? But there we go. And of course, there's uh, everyone's favorite when it comes to the equipment, what everyone's after, everyone likes to get, and that is the mining drill, which has the weight reduction, is a super cool tool. Uh, particularly, you can actually use it if you're on the end of a blood stalker. It's clever and useful. This is a good thing to get into the game. I think this is a really good addition. 
Then you go into the tech area. You have here the uh, laser claws. They look cool, they sound cool. And when you look in the first person mode, oh, that is pretty cool, isn't it? Let's face it, who doesn't want a set of laser claws? Uh, yeah, they're real cool, but are they gonna be useful? Probably not. You know, it's not, people don't really tend to do much hand to hand, but yeah, they may. The hover skip. Now I certainly, as you might see here, I, I uh, got this in uh, creative mode, so I certainly wasn't to earn one the normal way. Very expensive to earn. Um, they are pretty damn cool though. They have some a good ability, particularly the, um, what do you call it, the um, tractor beam. We can move even like brontosauruses around. That's pretty nifty. I don't know how useful that is to be honest, but you know, it, I'm sure people will use it from time to time. For raiding, maybe. Uh, it is good. It's super expensive. Uh, burns through element. And if you park one of these puppies in your garage, you're definitely going to be showing the other people on the server that you are the real alpha. My personal favorite, of course, is the cruise missile. Tech cruise missiles. Uh, there's been a few videos on them. You can uh, remote control, well, auto control them. Oh, they look so cool, don't they? And listen to that. When that roars over your head, you know you're in trouble. You wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of one of these. And when they hit, they do a big pile of damage. Big pile of damage. But they are super expensive and you're never going to have many of them on official, that's for sure. They provide next level destruction and they are really cool. A nice addition. The other tech one is of course is your uh, shoulder cannon. Oh, I hate this thing. It feels pathetic. I know you can change different modes and they can do different damage. But really, it just feels pathetic. It feels like a pea shooter on your shoulder. It looks really cool. It looks super techy. No problems with that. Um, you know, obviously you're trying to uh, replicate the predator. But you know, nice idea. But is anybody actually going to use this? <laughs> I really don't know. But let's look at the overall review. So my final review. Genesis is a DLC that's designed to be pre-arc. So because of that, it's a simulation and you can progress through a lot of things very quickly because it's a simulation. But it is lumped together with the other arcs, which of course it's actually meant to predate. So really when you put it into the context of the game itself, Genesis makes no sense whatsoever. The overall map itself has some really nice features. Uh, they are individual maps with real flair uh, all lumped together. They haven't bothered with some of those nice smooth transitions which makes good immersion. Uh, honestly, I think that's an incredibly lazy design. The maps are too small and on people are going to bore them pretty damn quickly, like I have already. So there's some really good stuff about the maps, but I think they took some shortcuts. The guide itself, the robot guide, I hate these things. Ark has always struggled to tell its story and they maybe used the guide here to help tell the story of Genesis. It is imposing on your immersion, but you can turn it off, I recognize that. The teleportation is a nice animation, but it's super clunky and it isn't as good as you think it is of getting around. The shop feature, said before, it doesn't really work and it undermines the rest of Ark. The challenges, Similar to the shop feature, um, undermines a lot of the other arc because they tie in with being able to purchase things and it really sticks Genesis way out on a limb. The dinos are a real mixed bag. Visually brilliant, sort of genius to stupidity, particularly in the PvP world. I do like them, but I also hate some of them as well. The gear itself, well, the best stuff is focused at the high end, the tech end. Most, but not all, just most of it is sort of just visual candy, to be honest. Uh, I do like some of it, but um, it's not as good as you perhaps would hope it to be. So, overall, what do I finally think of Genesis? As a standalone game, I actually think it's pretty good. 
I'd give it an 8 out of 10 standalone game. But when you put it as part of the cluster of other servers, it really drops down to about a 6 out of 10. But worst of all, Genesis, in my opinion, has devalued the other maps. So, overall, it's fun, but it just doesn't fit, and it just feels somewhat wrong. Yeah, and that's it. Look, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to tap out that like button. Consider hitting subscribe. I would much appreciate it. And I will see you in the next chapter. Thanks for watching.